Today we've got a ton of news, including new details for Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, the most overpriced DLC I've seen in 2024, and leakers are building hype for my June 11th direct prediction. So good morning, Mario, and good morning, Switch fans. Hope you're all doing fantastic out there. Yesterday, I made a full video talking about why I believe the Nintendo Direct for June is next week on the 11th, a Tuesday, and now we have some leakers kind of buying into it. Not from me, of course, their own sources, but they're also saying the 11th, and therefore I feel even stronger and even better about the 11th. When that gets announced, it'll probably be announced Monday, and then they'll say like, Tomorrow, tune in for a 40-minute direct featuring Nintendo Switch titles for 2024. I don't know if they'll say beyond, though. We'll have to wait and see, but what's going on, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Let me know what you think of today's topics in the comments down below. Let's start off with some Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. Don't know much about this game besides its June 27th release date and the fact that it's an old Luigi's Mansion game. But we got a trio of new trailers over in Japan that do show off more gameplay. It doesn't seem like they're showing off any new content. Not sure if we're going to get any. I would say that Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door had less new content than I was hoping for. I wonder if Luigi's Mansion 2 HD will be the same. It kind of feels like ports, straight ports, right, from like the, the Wii U. They got a lot of new content, but then when it's like a remaster or a remake, it doesn't get a lot of new content. This is kind of in between because it's a port from the 3DS, but they're calling it an HD version. So does that make it a remaster or a port? It's not a deluxe version like we sometimes get from the last console. So TBD on if there's going to be new details, new information or what, I don't really know. But we do have this new footage. The game does look fun and I really am a Luigi's Mansion fan. So even though it's not as expansive or impressive as Luigi's Mansion 3, I'll probably pick this one up. I'd love to know in the comments down below if you plan to do the same and what new content do you think they might be able to add. Now, just to give some official sauce to this June 11th direct stuff, a insider known in the Spanish community called Mr. Dry has posted about June 11th. Apparently, Mr. Dry has gotten leaks correct before. Um, they have been... Uh, related to Silent Hill, related to Metal Gear Solid, related to Resident Evil. They have good context in the industry, and it seems like they have a pretty solid record. And they have posted a new tweet saying that, yo, this Nintendo Direct is going to be on 11-6, which is the European way of saying 6-11, and uh, that will be our Nintendo Direct next week. Now we can get into speculation and predictions, of course, but everybody just hopes for Metroid Prime. I agree and I want it, but we did get some release dates for other games as well. Wild Bastards is coming out on September 12th of this year. This is the direct sequel to Void Bastards, and I say it in my best uh, Western drawl just to avoid any sort of YouTube algorithmic cussing engines, but this game looks super sick. You'll play as 13 different characters, manage the growth and relationship between each one as you send them out on different missions, and make sure they don't die. Now, I do wonder if there's any sort of permadeath here. It's a roguelike title, so it makes me think that if you lose a bounty hunter, your bounty hunter is done. You got 13 characters to kind of go through, which might be 13 lives. I don't know. I think the game looks super sick and I'm very excited for it. Void Bastards was a pretty cool game, but it, it felt like a little like half-baked to me. I don't know. Call me crazy, but I really didn't love it. I did think the art style was awesome and I thought some of the ideas there were great. So I'm looking forward to seeing if the new sequel can really grab me. And September is sadly closer than we think. Summer will be over before you know it. We're already in June. I cannot believe the year is almost halfway over. And we're going to find out about a ton of games. And this is one of them. But so is RPG Maker With. This is a game where you can play other people's RPGs or if you find yourself to be a creative genius, make your own. It's dropping in North America on Nintendo Switch October 11th. It came out in Japan April 11th, but it has not been out worldwide. And I'm guessing that in this uh, type of game, the localization is going to be incredibly important. RPG Maker is a big hit on PC. I don't know if it's built much of an audience yet on Nintendo Switch, but I'm sure this worldwide release in October will really help. And it does seem like we're starting to see a few titles fill in the second half of the year. We have an empty second half slate for Nintendo, and it's a great time to get your game announced to try and secure a date or at least secure some awareness. Because once Nintendo says, oh, Mario Party's in October, oh, Donkey Kong's in September, then people are going to quickly forget about stuff like RPG Maker With 
and WoW Bastards, uh, but they won't be forgetting about this Sonic DLC anytime soon. Well, it's Sonic by proxy because it's actually Super Monkey Ball Banana Rumble DLC, which is out June 25th. I'm super excited for the game. It's a $50 title. It looks to be, in my opinion, the best Monkey Ball we've got since the big Monkey Balls back on the GameCube era. But there's something really rubbing me the wrong way about this new Sonic DLC that includes four Sonic characters, Sonic, Amy, Tails, and Knuckles. It changes the bananas to coins. It's got 15 Sega-themed character customization items, and it costs $25. $25. bucks. That's like gosh, six bucks per character and then a few extra for the coin transfer? I don't know. It is included in the deluxe digital edition of the game, so probably if you really want this, that's the way to get it. Um, that digital deluxe edition is going for, I believe, $20 more, so I think that's a $70 thing, which still feels like a lot, and then to charge $25 for it individually just feels a little criminal. I am really hyped for this game. I think it might go down as the best release of the month, barring some crazy surprise drops at the Nintendo Direct, like Metroid Prime 2. But other than that, man, I like Sonic. I think it's kind of cool to really build this whole Sega roster into Monkey Ball. But goodness gracious, do we really need to have this drop? Now, I will clarify that there are two extra characters that they have yet to reveal. It's not made apparent if they're going to be more Sonic characters like are we getting, you know, Eggman and Big the Cat? Are we getting, I don't know, some other Sega character? It could be uh, Choo Choo Rocket. It could be uh, a taxi and a ball. I don't really know. But even still, six characters for 25 bucks feels like still a lot because these characters aren't like, I don't know. To me, it's uh, Fortnite is so expensive. $20 a skin or whatnot. I guess this is just the sign of the times. This is where we're at. You want to play as Amy or Tails in Monkey Ball? Banana Rumble, you're going to be paying a lot of bananas or a lot of coins in the case of this Sonic conversion. Uh, let me know what you think. Would you pay 25 bucks for six characters and balls, 15 customization items, and a coin banana switcheroo? I don't think it's worth it, especially considering the game is at a good value, I think, at $50. Now you're making this a $75 game, and I just, I don't, I don't really like it. I think it's pretty darn pricey. It's one of the, in my opinion, most egregious, expensive DLC packages I've seen this year. And I hope that uh, this does not sully what should otherwise be a really cool release and a monkey ball that I am absolutely excited for. Also excited to see what's new on the Shovel Knight front because Shovel Knight has delivered a ton of great games on Switch. I think all of their titles have released on Switch and we're also awaiting Mina the Hollower. Is that like a, a cook? Does she hollow things out or does she howler? Like, no, I think it's H-O-L-L, -L, right? Yeah, it's not H-O-W-L. I was like, dude, does this mouse howl? That seems very strange. But we'll find out more on June 14th, probably a release date, I'm guessing, for Mina and more from Shovel Knight, as this is celebrating the 10th anniversary of Shovel Knight. They say it's an approximately 20-minute broadcast that will include new updates, new announcements, new merch, and some dazzling surprises. So I do expect some new titles to be unveiled here. Shovel Knight has done great with Dig, Pocket Dungeon, Treasure Trove, and more. I think it's one of the coolest IP that has been created generated and given an entire genre spanning existence right it's like the mario of the modern indie era in many ways so it's really impressive i'm excited for this one to sort of be the cherry on top of the summer game fest stuff we've got ubisoft which should have some switched up summer game fest obviously will have some switched up the different indie and wholesome directs should have some switched up and then i think yacht club games presents on june 14th should also have some switched stuff that'll be next friday and that should i think wrap up at least this slate of presentations although there will probably be more as there's continuously presentations throughout the year uh, but yacht club games should be a good one as they've been a great supporter of switch and should be delivering new games nintendo and yacht club next week i think this is going to be our firestorm of fall titles and we'll figure out what the lineup is looking like i already like the ones that they've got going on here and i'd love for you to let me know which games thus far announced are you most excited to pick up in the second half of the year or right now is your wallet safe is there nothing on the horizon or radar that you're excited for on the switch as we wait to see what nintendo decides to divulge what summer game fest holds and what more we have in store for our little system that could that has grown up to be such a stellar star in the meantime everybody thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed today's video if you did leave a like or a comment down below stay safe stay healthy stay happy stay positive out there and until next time switch force 
out.